The next speaker I would like to present uh, has a PhD in uh, computer vision and optical physics. Uh, it's a deep tech topic. The guy is coming from Technical University of Munich and presenting a startup called Skyla. Uh, Skyla has been recently featured in Forbes in LA Times and won the Glendale Tech Week Award on one of the most innovative companies on the social security and the security space. Please welcome Ara Hazaran from Tume. Thanks a lot. Um, yeah, well, uh, formerly from Tum, now I joined full time uh, and to to this uh, to this thing, and uh, just continuing what Felicitas was talking about about the AI being good and possibly bad. Well, this is an example of it being extremely good, and you you will see what it is about. And um, well, we are calling it a startup, but it's already established company with uh, with. Customers and everything, and we presented about we presented this company last year on on the uh, on this summit. Back then we had the MVP like minimum viable product thingy. Now it's all full fetched, and I will talk about it and just regard this as an example of uh, how advanced AI currently is and how state of the art it is and what it is cap capable of. And yeah, well, it is about Skyla or Scylla, call it, uh, they, they call it differently, we're okay with both of them. And it is intelligent augmentation of surveillance security systems. So let's start first uh, about the problem. What is there to, well, w what it is, it is uh, based on computer vision algorithms and it has the artificial intelligent concept in it. And I will stress this point a little bit further on it is AI. So normally, we call AI everything that is related to data science, machine learning, etc. But when, well, the AI itself, the definition of it is kind of missing there most of the time. And here I will to to tell you that this is an example of AI working over there. And uh, the, uh, the goal of it is to detect and alert uh, the, the violence acts, the threatening acts, as soon as possible in within seconds, and make them like the, the, to eliminate the after effect, to neutralize this violence acts, and well, save, possibly save lives. And uh, again, what is there to augment in terms of surveillance? Normally, how it happens, you all can envision, you've seen it in movies, etc. There are people watching on monitors. So there are as many people as you can afford, as many monitors that a person can watch, and also there, so there kicks in uh, human uh, errors, human factor errors. Uh, well, people can miss stuff on the monitor, and you cannot zoom in in every single uh, monitor and watch it, even if with a good vision. And this thing should be done normally at minimum 10 hours a day, normally 24. And again, uh, limitations of visual capabilities, human factor errors, and uh, hardware resources, human resources, limitations of them. And of course, this all connects with a high cost. So if we can help minimizing this whole uh, bad effects, then, then what's what we offer? It's Skyline and how it works. It's a security suite. Well, the core, the center of it is the behavior and threatening uh, detection, threatening behavior detection, threatening object detection. But it also have other two modules next to, the, next to it working in par parallel. I will demonstrate how exactly it works. But again, as soon as there is a threatening act with the object, with a weapon, etc., that triggers the alarm. And then the person which did this is being tracked through the, um, through the area, through the old cameras. They all start doing this search and they track the person and they, they put him on the map accordingly. Like indoor navigation map shows where this person was seen the last and all this information is being sent to uh, resource uh, the, the, the response units so they can act as fast as possible. The information I will show you what they receive is invaluable. And again, if it's an uh, indoor ca camera, it starts to track these people. We started with a face identification. So we, we were like tracking people by their face, but 
then we found out that not necessarily the face is visible. A person can be a, wearing a mask or he can hide it or he can f move very fast. Normally face recognition algorithms work well when there is a kind of a, um, acceptable angle towards the camera. So a person has to look in the direction of camera to be identified. Later on we upgraded to the appearance search. So there we are looking and searching by the appearance. The same way a person watching the camera will be looking for the person he saw first time, like where having a weapon gun. The same way the system looks in every single camera it is attached in, looking for the same appearance of a person and sending this information to the response units immediately. And again, if the person was mentioned walking out from a car, then the car is being searched in outdoor cameras by the uh, license plate, by the appearance. And again, in outdoor map, you have the map of where the car has been seen with the historical points there and there and there. This facilitates the tracking down and, and neutralizing the threat. So uh, all this is done by Skyla, and then the information is being transferred to the dashboards, to the mobiles, and this whole thing is working. It is installable. It's even demo. You, you can request and get your demo yourself, like on your net laptop, and test it yourself, show the gun being alerted, etc. So this is a typical dashboard that uh, endpoint will get, not an admin, admin dashboard, but uh, one of the endpoint dashboards. There at the bottom, you, you see the, uh, here you see the live feed of the camera that has detected the threat. There can be as many cameras connected to the uh, Scylla server that can analyze. Uh, and then on the top, it's the last detection frame. There is some uh, graph that shows the violence and the object uh, probabilities and a log, so there is a history, etc. So you can see all the cameras here, um, and uh, yeah, the last one, the active one, is being red flashing, and there is a sound, etc. So this whole thing is happening within second of the detection. Oops, sorry. Yeah. So I will show you some some results. Uh, like this part is kind of se semi-scientific, I would call. We have tested the system. Uh, all of you must must have this question. So, how good the system is at detecting stuff? Like how uh, distant should be it? How fast it can be detected when when uh, weapon is withdrawn, etc. So, what we have done, we have done this comprehensive uh, full uh, scale uh, test. We have the try. I will show you the the graphs, but just to show uh, the, the tables, but to explain you, we have tested the different distances, different weapon types, different backgrounds, well lit, dark lit, and even IR, because it, uh, the system also can see night vision mode. Most of the IP cameras can, do have nowadays this mm, night vision modes, so the system is trained also to see that too. And, uh, um, we, you, might, you might ask, like, how can we detect this 30 feet, 35 meters from, and usually we, we advertise this as a still like, and, and it can be installed to analyze the feeds from drones. The drones are surveilling the area, like larger area from the distance, and 35 meters. Yes, it is possible. It's an example. I will show you how exactly it works and how can we detect something that is not even visible. If a person looks over there, he has to at least he has to zoom in to make sure that what is the guy is holding is actually a gun. So I will explain you how it works. But then some examples of detections in IR is one in one of our offices. Again, and these are the results. The numbers here represent uh, the kind of probability of being detected under different distances, and, we, and there are seconds. The first two seconds, then two to four seconds, four to eight seconds. And these are the numbers for different weapon types, uh, guns, assault rifles. For knives, it's a bit slower, uh, lower because it's kind of very it needs a little bit more time to make sure that, it, that what you hold in your hand is a knife, not a mobile phone. But it does. So, And some uh, dark background, uh, fairly lit backgrounds here, there. 
and the IR. IR is, again, a little bit slower, but still, you still have it within the seconds. When the weapon is withdrawn, you have the, it within the seconds. I have the video demonstrating how it works. So I, when there's time, I will show the video too. And uh, I will, okay. So you would, you would ask, how about the false positives? Uh, so, how many times a day system will fail uh, in recognizing the object or the, the movement? So, we did the testing. We did indoor, outdoor. We run three, four days in seven locations. And you can see they are fairly crowded. There are a lot of people. These are one, some offices of ours. Uh, IT guys with uh, always in their hands, their mobiles. I'm, I'm mentioning mobiles because they are these this bad guys in, in, in the aspect. They are very hard, very easy to mix with a, with a gun if I'm holding something like this, with a, like a mobile. From a far, far point of view, like 12 meters, this is very easily mistaken by a gun or a knife. So we had to uh, put a lot of efforts to differentiate, to teach the system to tell one from the other. So again, a lot of people holding black objects in terms of computer mice and mobile phones, etc. And we had, within these 287 hours of analysis, we had just five po false positives. I'll show you what they look like, but again, just five false positives. If you calculate the specificity of Scylla, this comes to this number, 99, a lot of nines, okay. So uh, it's like, Again, the challenge of analyzing the video feed, it gives you an advantage because it's a video feed. You can take an advantage of kind of a historical analysis, but you have a lot of data, a lot of frames to analyze. So for a typical camera with lowered 5 FPS a day, 10 hours will give you 230,000 frames. If you don't want to make more than one or two mistakes a day, then your specificity has to be 99, It's a lot of nines for computer vision-based program, a lot. Any specialist, then when they hear about it, they, don't, they tend not to approach this, these numbers because, well, uh, computer vision programs, they can have 90-something, but not that many. So how did we manage it? I will talk, talk about it briefly, but of course it's a patented technology and it's a commercial technology. Unfortunately, I wouldn't be able to go into very deep details, but the overview will be there. So the false positives like, look like this. So somehow the system saw their rifle, uh, a gun here, a gun here, their gun, and here, actually, I had to zoom in, change the contrast to make sure that my colleague and my friend wasn't holding one of the toy guns we have in the office to test the system. It's not a gun, it's a mobile, but still. There were just these five mistakes, and they all come from this very bad uh, mini cam, which has one millimeter of camera. I'm using this for, for demo purposes, but then we still, we are camera agnostic. We, claim this, it's our unique sale, one of our unique selling points. We don't need hardcore, ultra high quality cameras. It works on almost any camera as long as the resolution is HD, not even full HD. So it does work, just five mistakes in uh, three, four days. Well, it's kind of affordable. From the good cameras, there was almost none, just one more. So anyway, so how it works, how we, came to these results. We kind of were inspired by the similarities with human vision, human or eagle or animal, let's say. So the same way that a human looks, it's, sim it's similar, right? We have this perspective vision. We, have this, we can have a suspicion that something is wor happening there, and then we change our vision and we focus in there, and we kind of focus in this area, the same way the algorithm works. It looks on the overall image. It has the suspicion of something happening there in terms of action and the object. Then it kind of zooms in in this area, tracks it a a some time, uh, some milliseconds, and then makes the final decision. And the decision maker is itself AI-based. 
But again, the, the, our, our strength is in the fact that we're zooming in in this area. So we do not lose the resolution. Normally, computer vision-based algorithms, they have to lower the resolution so the thing fits in the memory, especially if we're talking about uh, real-time video analysis, we have to lower. The typically, we're talking about like, in a video analysis, we're talking about 120 pixels, so 120 or something like that. I mean, it can be a little bit higher, but then that's about it. Here, when you use this idea, you should not, you do not lower the resolution. You just take this part of the image out of the whole thing. You just focus on it. If you are mistaken, if it's not a weapon, you skip it, and then you look again on the overall image. That's how it works. And that's why this image in a blurry something something goes like this, land like this, and then like this. And the, this whole thing happens in real time by the algorithm. It focuses, focuses in the, this image originally was 4K. And 4K, to squeeze the 4K image in the memory, it's a challenging task. It's almost, well, it's not possible. It's, it, it can be possible, but then it won't be commercially viable because you will need a supercomputer to do that. And my notebook right now can run Scylla and it can analyze six video feeds, six cameras, just a notebook. Well, it runs on a GPU, it's a gaming network, no, notebook, not high end, one of the low ends, and it can analyze six. A distant server will analyze 128 streams or something like that. So this is, we put a lot of efforts to minimize the resource uh, uh, hogness of the algorithm too. And again, it, it, the, the logic itself, we patented this, and this is the core. Of course, the model, the data set, of course, we are kind of we spend a lot of efforts, also money, on the data set, on making it perfect the way it, we want it to be. So the model itself is also good, both models for the action and and object detection. But then, this algorithm makes it perfect. And uh, yeah, what happens then is that you get uh, if if your mobile has our app, you get the instant notification. And notification contains all sorts of information. It contains where it happened, where the violence, suspicious act happened, and uh, there is, if, you, if you click on, the, on this uh, information, it guides you how to get there, second floor, above the hallway, etc. So this is a lot of valuable information that a typical security guard will get, or police officer. Otherwise, he has to find it out it's himself, etc. This saves a lot of time. And imagine if there is a report of some violence acts. Normally, it comes from random people. I'm under table. I don't know. There's a shooting. I don't. I haven't seen the guy. I don't know. And this, with a frame, gives all the information. Who is the guy? Who, what is he holding? How maybe how many of them or something like that? But still, you get all this information. Also, if there is a database of faces connected to the system, then this button, which is translated as smart suspect identification system, if you press on it and click on the person of, the, uh, of, of interest, then it runs facial analytics, and if it is in the base, then you get the, the report who the suspect is. All right, so we have this in, incorporated in the Scylla. And some, some accuracy test of the face recognition that we have. Again, it might be very um, impressive, some of the numbers, like 97% of accuracy, but then, uh, yeah, if the face is uh, well seen and resolution is high enough, etc., you get this. Then if it's not that well seen, then you get the number goes down, etc. So facial analytics, it works, but then you have to be kind of lucky that the person looks on that. That's why asset tracking or a person tracking module that we have developed, we consider it is an upgrade to this one. So uh, face recognition is cool, but then the person by the appearance, tracking a person by the appearance is our appro uh, proprietary algorithm, it's even better. And, uh, and again, it can be used for not only for security reasons, but also for customer tracking. We have this model that helps tracking the customer from in, in shopping areas or whatever to calculate how much time he spends in the queue or next to the cashier, etc. 
And yeah, in this case, it's a human face. Not necessarily the person should look on the camera. It will still be tracked through different cameras, and we can understand it's the same person. And we, this is an example of a dashboard for a vehicle identification tracking model. It can recognize the numbers and, uh, I mean, license plate numbers and, and letters, and report if this is a car of the suspect. And it is installed in several locations. In, in Minsk, Belarus, it calculates the, the cars per lane and reports. They regulate the traffic. And in, in back in Armenia, in our home country, and then in Egypt also. And some, again, some numbers of the scores, the accuracy test we have uh, performed, pretty cool. And uh, this is a little detour of the system because we can detect the objects. Why not to do it for also like peaceful reasons? And this is a parking, parking lot solution that tracks the, the cars. There's some uh, analytics, not very straightforward. I mean, if you have camera on the top and looking correct, Great, that's an easy task. If it's looking from the angle, not so many, but still, we're able to differentiate the cars from each other and then report um, the, uh, the free spaces versus occupied ones. And just to recap what it does, uh, it analyzes live streams in, in real time and detects uh, any threat of uh, violence acts with weapons and also fights and knives, etc. And it uh, reports in within the seconds. Also, it has the ability to do facial analytics and hum uh, the rec recognition, um, identity recognition. It can be deployed on drones. It can work from very far distances because of this proprietary zoom-in tracking algorithm that we have. And also, it can be some detours of it can be used to uh, detect and track some objects like unattended bags, etc. As long as it is taught to track these systems, uh, these these objects, sorry, then it can be used to uh, to different algorithms. Like if the bag is unattended for more than one minute, there it goes. The alarm goes off. And what the key features? Uh, again, except what I've already told you about, uh, it's uh, a camera agnostic, normally visual surveillance monitoring system agnostic. We have good integration with different VMS softwares. It's, we just put the server next to it, connect it, and there, there you go. You don't need to do anything in your existing uh, system. You just connect the server, there you go. It analyzes, sends it back. And uh, it can s reduce security costs drastically, because basically the server will do most of the job. The guy is there just to confirm. And um, the, it, it, can, it always evolves, and the model is getting just better with the time. I think that I have outlined most of it. Uh, I would just mention my team members. Some of them you see here walking around, the one among the organizing um, uh, team, and uh, yeah, uh, we were mentioned in different um, different media, and we are sponsored by Develando, mother company from which it branched out the startup. We were chosen to participate startup bootcamp in 2018, and we were sponsored back then by Atomico Group in Mexico. With this, thank you everyone for the attention, and I'm uh, open for possible questions. Just on the background, I will put some uh, examples of the tests and just for the fun of it. Yeah, uh, go for it. I want to ask uh, on how many hours of real video have you trained it? And with how many uh, positive cases in those videos? Okay, well, some, some information will be, <laughs> I think will be a little bit classified, I would say. Real video, um, I would say just for the test, right? Uh, what we trained on, I wouldn't mention, but we test on 60 hours of video. And test is usually a fraction of what you train it on. And in terms of uh, objects, again, we have million-ish, all right, the objects for training. 
So it's, uh, it's not a small data set, it's a huge data set. And I mentioned, but I didn't talk about AI part. So the system right now, it's capable of looking through the media, well, we use Instagram, we use YouTube, etc. find the weapon and get it into its own database. You might say, um, I mean, and, and then it, in the next iteration, it uses this additional data to train itself, to make it better. You might say, okay, well, it already saw the weapon, why we use it to the data set? But this adds the generalization, all right? So you can teach it on a black weapon of some, some style, and then it saw, sees a little bit longer, or whatever, like a little bit brownish, and puts this, recognizes it, and puts it in, back in, uh, the, the, in, in the data set. And it's so good that we do not need to follow it, it does it automatically. I'm speaking now, it searches through the web as its data set on its own. Okay, but you also need to consider the, the frames before because the context matter a lot. If you are inside an office, it's not, it doesn't have to uh, have somebody who is coming often in the office does nothing, but someone who comes out of the office and does something. If you are in a concert, the, the situation is different, so you need to always to uh, look at the time series and also train the model based on exactly that context and that certain location. Exactly, exactly. That's how we do. I mean, there is there are points where the violence starts. There are videos with both general and violence, and there are videos with violence only. So of course, the content, the the point that when the thing starts, that's that's the important point. Yes. Do you distinguish between toy weapons and real weapons? If they look like real, then we don't. And uh, it's, it's legit, because in the ways that it will be used, in the, in the areas that it is already used, there shouldn't be toy weapons also. And they are fine with getting a false positive from a toy weapon than to miss a real one. And you're only tracking people that can walk, so you don't have to use wheelchairs or pushing cars? No, 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 that doesn't matter. If I'm sitting and I'm just pointing a gun on you... You're using your arm, so you're doing hand tracking. Yeah, in a, in a way, yes. So the movement should be, of course, uh, within this. I mean, if a weapon is hanging somewhere or on a table, never will it trigger. There should be an action. And I'm, by, by the action, I doesn't, it doesn't necessarily mean there should be movement. If, even if I'm pointing and not moving, that will trigger the system itself. There's a trade-off of the, of the object and the action, and the AI takes from both. No. Like if people sit, continue sitting no, we don't, because in some areas, for example, a guy who enters the school, not necessarily on the first camera, there will be anyone next to him. We started to, initially we thought about like reaction of the crowd, etc., but we don't because not necessarily there will be someone next to the guy when he starts the attack before it even happened. And now in some schools, they use uh, the, the system to trigger the alarm and close all the doors automatically. So the moment he saw, he's seen with a weapon in a corridor, all the doors are closed. What other question? Um, we're in Germany, we're actually uh, people attacking with, uh, with uh, you know, AR-15s or these uh, tactical weapons. It's relatively rare that most of the time it's with other kinds of weapons, the UK is like the Egyptian mm -hmm. um, or other small weapons. Um, do you actually identify the weapons? Uh, yes, with sticks. We train the system on the sticks, and also the action itself matters in there. There, the action for the fights and sticks and baits. No. Yeah, I mean, anything, any prolonged object, then it will trigger the alarm, right? Any, like a, I don't know, selfie stick will trigger the alarm. So the action should matter. And we have focus, we can, we can alter the system, of course, we can lower the sensitivity if necessary. But normally people say, all right, we, we, sorry, but we, we even heard like cases like knives, they don't matter. There are as many damages that you can do with a knife. Bring us the firearm detection. We don't care about knives. There are some. Uh, uh, one other question. You mentioned, you mentioned the false 
Oh, that is kind of easy. As I said, in terms of time uh, series, it's also like we, we tested the system within the time to also mention like the, so you can consider there's a slight difference between 0.2, uh, from zero to two second, two second to four. So I would say for the moment, the system will never miss. The question is when it will see the weapon. So like if eight seconds of me walking here will trigger the system, it, should it be considered a false negative because it didn't see the first two seconds? It's something like normally, I mean, previously we had issues with the system, I said one year ago. Now, I, unfortunately I don't have the time right now, but I can show you the demos. I will just open my notebook and give you the gun and, and ask you to walk around. It won't miss the gun. Right? It just depends on when it will see it. When it will see. And of course, if it's not visible, if it's far in the, in the hand, etc., okay, uh, then then it will miss it. I think we are past the time, so we have to get them. Yeah. Sorry. One more question. Oh yeah, go for it. Well, yes, we scavenge uh, social media. So in terms of, um, I don't know about the privacy thing. Well, if it's out there for social, then we use it. I don't know if we, sorry? I cannot use. <laughs> <laughs> okay, German privacy is not... Okay, we'll consider that one too. Okay, okay. All right, there is a debate there. I cannot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Okay. We're not collecting um, uh, information which is related to a person. Uh, so if it's public, if you're using uh, public information like Twitter, so we can use it. All right, there's a conflict of ideas. Only if you don't store it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We start a picture back and somebody asks to delete the data. We don't store the data. Yeah, we, we definitely don't store the data, right? The feature vectors are only only stored, so it's it's kind of altered. And for in terms of feature vectors, I uh, don't like thousand something, twenty four numbers, etc. From the video. Okay, we will let's discuss it. Uh, there are some some different opinions there. We'll, we'll we can discuss it later on. Any more questions? Well, again, a little bit of quiet. There are boosting trees, several of them, etc. We can discuss uh, some details later on, but we have developed our own algorithm. It's kind of an assembly of uh, decision makers, a jury of some sort that raise their hand, and uh, it works perfect. <laughs> it does. It does. Doesn't make the, the, the mistake almost never. I think we're done. Thank you very much.